Hello everyone and welcome back to Joe's Math Tools. We have a little harder one today, but we are going to solve this equation involving fractions. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so to begin solving our equation that we have here today, remember that when you're working with fractions with unlike denominators, the first thing you always need to do is find your LCD. So let's find our LCD when we have two and five. And we know that the LCD for two and five is going to be 10. So that means that we're now going to be converting this entire equation to its equivalent form where all of our denominators have a denominator of 10. So let's start with our first one, which is 2p minus 3 all over. So let's find the equivalent form for our first fraction. So we're looking for the number that when we multiply it to 2, it's going to equal to 10. And we know that 2 times 5 is equal to 10. And if we multiply 2 times 5, that means that everything in my numerator also has to be multiplied by 5. So 5 times 2p will equal to 10p. And then 5 times negative 3 will equal to negative 15. And we now have 10p minus 15. Okay, so now let's do our second term, which is p minus 6 all over 5 and again we're changing that to its equivalent form where we have 10 as its denominator and one thing I'm going to do here is include the minus sign and the reason I'm going to do that is so that when I distribute my term or my number that I'm going to be multiplying my fraction by I will also distribute the minus or the negative sign at the exact same time as well okay so we Okay, so we're looking for the number that when we multiply it to 5, it's going to equal to 10. And we know that 2 times 5 is equal to 10, which means that we're multiplying everything in our numerator by 2 as well. And we're distributing this minus sign. So we have negative 2 times p will equal to negative 2p. And negative 2 times negative 6 will equal to a positive 12. So we now have negative 2p plus 12. And for our last term, which is our 3, and remember that our 3 has a denominator of 1, even though we don't write it in. So we know that 1 times 10 is equal to 10. So 10 times 3 will equal to 30. So our equation is equal to 30. And now that we have everything changed to its equivalent form where 10 is its denominator, we're now going to remove our denominator. And while I am doing that as well, I will also collect my like terms on the left hand side of my equation together. So I have 10p and minus 2p. I'm going to put back my minus with my 15. Remember we always move terms with the sign in front of it. We don't just randomly move terms and then whatever sign was there we put the number there. No, we move our terms with the number that is with the sign that's in front of it. So now that we have all of our like terms together, let's start simplifying. So we have 10p minus 2p will equal to 8p. And when negative 15 is added to 12, we are going to have a negative 3 equals to 30. Okay, so now let's collect our like terms. So we have negative 3 and 30, which are both constants. So since our 3 is being subtracted on the left-hand side, we will be adding 3 to 30 on the right-hand side. So my AP is equal to 33. And now we're going to apply our one step rule to get our P by itself, which means that we are dividing both sides of our equation by 8. So 8 divided by 8 will leave us with P. And this is EP is equal to 33 eighths. Okay, so let's apply our check. Our P is equal to 33 eighths. And we're going to substitute that into our equation everywhere that p appears. Minus 3 all over 2 minus 33 eighths 
minus 6 all over 5 equals to 3. Okay, so let's simplify our first brackets and then we're going to begin some crazy calculations if I could put it any better. So 2 times 33 is going to equal to 66 eighths minus 3 all over 2 minus 33 eighths minus 6 all over 5 equals 3. Okay, so now that we have done that, I'm going to apply my first step, which is I'm going to be finding the LCD of my first set of fractions, which is 2, 5, and the 3. And the LCD for these numbers, well, sorry, the 1 that is in the 3 denominator is going to be 10. So we're now going to be converting these fractions to their equivalent form where 10 is their denominator. Okay, so this is going to get a little crazy, so I'm going to change my ink for this part. So follow along with me as I go. So we're looking for the number that when we multiply 2 by is equal to 10. So 2 times 5 is 10. So now everything in my numerator will be multiplied to 5. So we have 66 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30, put out 0, carry the 3. And 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 will equal to 33. 330. So we have 338 minus 5 times 3 is 15. And now our second fraction, what number we multiply 5 by to get 10? We know that 2 times 5 is 10. So everything in my numerator again is multiplied by 2. And again, just like we did earlier, we're going to distribute that minus with my 2 so that we can apply both distribution at one time. So negative 2 times 33 is going to be negative 66 eighths. And negative 2 times negative 6 will equal to 12. And just like we did before, 3 times 10 will equal to 30. Okay, so now we have 338 minus 15 minus 66 eighths plus 12 equals to 30. Okay, so now for our second step, we're going to be looking for our LCD again. And I know this is crazy, but we will be looking for our LCD again because we still have fractions involved. So the LCD we're going to be looking for is 8. Since both of the denominators in both of our fractions is 8, that means their LCD is 8. So since 330 already has a denominator of 8, we're just going to return that back to our question. And now my 15 will be multiplied to 8. So we have 15 times 8, and 5 times 8 is 40. We put our 0, carry the 4. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 120. So we have our 120. Again, my... 66 already has a denominator of 8, so we'll just return that back. And again, we will be multiplying our 12 times 8, and we know that 12 times 8 is 96, which will equal to our 30 times 8, and we know that 8 times 3 is 24, so we'll just add our 0 at the end. Okay, so now that we have completely gotten rid of all of our fractions, let's write all of those numbers back in and then begin simplifying our left-hand side of our equation to see if all of this good stuff that we have written here really does work out to 240. So let's start with the first one. We have 320, 330, sorry, minus 120, which will equal to 210. So we have 210 minus 66, Added to 96 should equal to 240. So now let's look at our 210 minus 66. And again, remember that we are working to make sure that the left and the right hand side of the equation all equal to the exact same thing. 
And if it doesn't, that means we need to go back and check our question because something is not right. So now adding our last step, which is 96. So 4 plus 6 is 10, put our 0 carry the 1. 9 plus 1 is 10, plus 4 will be 14. Put our 4, carry the 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 240 equal to 240. And since both the left and the right is equal to the same thing, that means P equals 33 eighths is our correct answer for this equation. Now, I don't know if this was the first time any of you have ever seen a question like this work out where you found the LCD twice. I know it's a bit crazy, but think of it this way. Um, there is another way that you could have worked out this question. You could have decided to um, simplify your numerator by finding the LCD for your numbers way up here. But then at some point, you would have still have to find the LCD again unless you did your division. And probably in the next video, I will show you how you can do that as well, where we can work with the numerator and then divide our answer by the, by the denominator. And then I think somewhere along the way, we still may have ended up having to find the LCD again, but this way I felt was a lot easier instead of trying to simplify the numerator and then go into the division because that part does get a bit crazy and it does get a bit messy. And I really want to work it in a way where you would be able to follow me, understand the steps and not get so caught up in the crazy aspects of working out the question. So I hope this video was extremely useful for you. I hope you were able to follow along without any difficulties. If there's something that I did that you still probably have questions about, remember to post your questions in the box below so that I can read your comment and respond to it. So if this was helpful, give me a big thumbs up. And remember that whenever you're ready to learn a new skill, learn return back to Jules Math Tools where we make math easy.